Now you guys are not used to three digits. When we say three digits, we mean 100 on top, basically. That's what it means. So prepare yourself for that, inshallah ta'ala, by hopefully, inshallah ta'ala, again, that, that, the, the beautiful gathering and the experience of fasting, inshallah, give us this, bidna Allah, azza wa coolness of the heart and the mind, inshallah ta'ala. Now tonight, our Qari, our, our Qari was reciting from Surah Al-Anfal and Surah At-Tawbah. Al-Anfal and At-Tawbah. Can you guys tell me what is so unique and so special about having a tawbah and an anfal, or an anfal first and then tawbah back to back? Let's first of all focus on the theme. What is the main theme of Surat Al Anfal? The main theme. There is one major topic that is covered in Surat Al Anfal. What is it? What is it? The Battle of Badr. The Battle of Badr almost from the beginning to the end. However, this is not the actual theme of the surah. This is the story of the surah itself. But there is another theme behind the story of Surah ba of, of Badr. What is it? The establishment of the Muslim society in Medina. Because as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was speaking about the battle of Badr, then he said towards the end of the surah, That if they are to deceive you, or if they are to uh, kinda, uh, 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 betray you, فَإِنَّ حَسْبَكَ اللَّهِ Allah is sufficient for you. هُوَ الَّذِي أَيَّدَكَ بِنَصْرِهِ Victory comes from Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, not from the people. Victory comes from Him. هُوَ الَّذِي أَيَّدَكَ بِنَصْرِهِ وَبِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ And He also aided you and support you with the believers coming around you. Because the Prophet وسلم, he left Medina, he left Mecca, Two years before that, and he was just by himself and Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala and two individuals helping, helping him out. But then eight years later, he came with how many back to Mecca? 10,000 people. Can you imagine? Three years later, 100,000 going with Hajj with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So quickly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was preparing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, aiding him and supporting him. Ayyadaka bi nasriha bil mu'mineen. And then he said subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa allafa bayna qulubihim. It is He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Azza wa Jal, who alladhi allafa bayna qulubihim. He brought their hearts together. You know, look around you. This gathering is amazing. If you look around you, there are no two people look alike, alike next to each other. Different backgrounds, different cultures, perhaps speaking different tongue as well, original tongue and so on. What brought you all over here? La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. However, this gathering is only now by just you know physical gathering what is more important to make this gathering meaningful is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa allafa bayna qulubihim he brought their hearts together law anfaqta ma fil ard jami'an ma allafta bayna qulubihim walakin Allah allafa baynahum if you were to spend everything in this world to bring their hearts together you will not be able to do that it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who brought their hearts together how much we spend in Jaman, our communities to bring the community together? Community iftar, community breakfast, gathering for this and that. We spend lots and lots and lots of money hoping to bring the community together. But what do we do at the end? We bring the people together. Do we bring community? That's a whole different story. It's a whole different story. We only bring the people. But the community, it's in the heart. Now that's the essence of these gatherings. If the essence is not there, this gathering just becomes a physical gathering. So Surah Al-Anfal was the beginning of the establishment of the society. Surah Al-Tawbah, on the other hand, what is the main theme of Surah Al-Tawbah? What is it? The hypocrites. That's a very common thing. We think it's just a hypocrite, but it's much more than that, actually. The beginning of Surah Al-Tawbah, is actually the end of the, the prophethood, almost. Because the Prophet ﷺ was given the command right now that it's over. Your time is almost up. It's time to announce to the people of, of the Arabian Peninsula that they have only four months to stay there, whether they become Muslims or they have to depart. So eventually, like the end of his message, وسلم, is, his mission is almost complete. Al-Anfal, the beginning of the mission, and Al-Tawbah was almost the end of that mission. And then in Tawbah, because the mission is almost coming to an end right now, Allah Azza wa Jal brought in Surah Tawbah some of the aspects of a failing society. What you need to be aware of. Be careful with this. 
Number one, number two, number three. There are many aspects were mentioned in Surah At-Tawbah warning the believers that to establish, in order to establish and maintain the victory that was established from Badr until today, you have to maintain one, two, three, four, five things. Allah mentioned them in Surah At-Tawbah. One of them is even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah At-Tawbah the story of Hunayn, which was actually years before that, uh, before that even. Hunayn right after Fatih Makkah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned the believers. They thought because of, mashallah, we're met too many right now, we're not going to be defeated because of numbers. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed them in the surah that they were almost defeated. But by the grace of Allah azza wa jal, they recovered. Which means never ever think that numbers will make big difference to you. Like us over in the Muslim community. We go by numbers in many, many things. When again, the essence is in the heart. Much more than that. And Allah surah al-Tawbah, he mentioned a lot of the qualities of the munafiqeen, the hypocrites. That one minhum. You're gonna recite. You're gonna listen to the recitation later on. Many ayat in Surah At-Tawbah begins with the with the word wa minhum, wa minhum, wa minhum, which means and amongst them, and amongst them, and among them, which means and part of them. Mean who are these them that Allah is speaking about? The hypocrites. And this is for me and you to avoid because if we behave like that, like it was gonna be mentioned in Surah At-Tawbah, it means we are not gonna be able to establish what Allah spoke about in Surah Al-Anfal. Going back again, how did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allafa bayna qulubim? How did Allah bring the hearts together? See in Medina, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the moment he arrived into Medina, the society, physically speaking, was already established. Sahaba were there, the group is, is getting bigger and bigger. The moment he arrived there, he instantly sallallahu alayhi wa became the head of a state, sallallahu wa sallam. Suddenly he becomes the, 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 the head of a state, sallallahu wa sallam. So he had to deal with people on different levels. On a very different level right now. But it was already established almost for him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What he needed to do right now is to establish the community itself. The people among themselves, how, they can, how we can bring them together. And that's when we see all the instructions that came from the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, go beyond just having the people come to pray in the masjid, just come and fast together and make breakfast break fast together and so on. Way beyond that. Like what? Many of the hadith that the Prophet ﷺ was establishing at that time about brotherhood, sisterhood, love for one another, and so on. لا يؤمن أحدكم You are not a true believer until you love for your brothers and sisters what you love for yourself. You guys heard this hadith multiple times, right? How many of us truly implement this hadith? How many of us would get to a point to be like these Ansar when the Muhajireen arrived? They're giving everything away. Take it. I have this land, we split. I have this much money, we split that. How much, where are we and how far can we go? I know, of course, this is maybe some, for many people, it's idealism. That it's almost like an impossible to achieve today. But still, the essence of it is the heart. Talking about the principle itself. Not necessarily the practice, but the principle itself. Rasulullah says, Wallahi la yu'min, wallahi la yu'min, wallahi la yu'min. Not a true believer, not a true believer, not a true believer. Sahaba were scared. Who is it, Ya Rasulullah? Qala man la yamanu jaruhu bawa'iqa. The one who is with whom his neighbor is not safe from his evil. How are we with our neighbors? Specifically, mashallah, the Muslim community here is huge. Almost every, every block has two, three houses, two maybe neighbors in the same apartment complex, Muslims. How are you with your neighbors? It's Ramadan. Did you guys break fast together? Did you share plates together? Have you helped out with anything with one another? Are we doing that even? Are we establishing these beautiful connections with one another? Now, Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu again, many a hadith, he says, la yu'min, at not a true believer, a person who doesn't do so and so and so and so. All these things. And all of them about love for one another and establishing a society. Ramadan, alhamdulillah, started eight days ago. So that's now one week past, already more than one week past from the month of Ramadan. What did you do in the masjid besides coming, doing your personal duty, Praying, making your dua, your dhikr, seeking istighfar, and just going back home. Have you tried to establish a community around you? Are you establishing a community around you? It means are you becoming part of a community? Or just minding your own business? I just want to come to a beautiful environment, nice ambience in the masjid, do my salah, my ibadah, peacefully enjoying it, because alhamdulillah, Valley Ranch don't do too many fundraising during the taraweeh time. So therefore, then we go home. You know, it's again beyond just praying taraweeh. It's beyond just fasting the month of Ramadan. 
you need to establish a community. It starts from the heart. Physically, alhamdulillah, we are already one community. Fadlullahi azza wa jalla. May Allah bless you for coming here, jama'ah. But we need to take it to the next level. The next level right now is that you truly, truly establish this connection between brother and sister that you see around you. If you don't know all these people right now, by the end of the month of Ramadan, then we still have some issues. And I've been mentioning this regularly to shake hands with five new people. By, you know, from eight days until today, five new people, how many people you would shake hands with by now? Your math, Jama'ah, what is it? Forty, right? Forty people. Imagine, by the end of the month of Ramadan, how many people? The whole masjid. So I want you to do that again, inshallah ta'ala, and I want to conclude with this. The 30 seconds I'm going to give you right now at the end, I want you to shake hands with the people next to you, and I want you to take it to the next level. When you're done, but in these 30 seconds, inshallah, while you're standing up to line up for the salah, I want you to hug each other, inshallah ta'ala. Bismillah, go for it. You have 30 seconds, get to introduce yourself to the people next to you. Get to know them by name and for the sisters as well, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, bismillah. Can we stand up and hug each other, Jama'ah? Go ahead, bismillah. Stand up and hug each other. Takbir.